Before his tragic passing, Tony Bennett was all about celebrating life. From alleged mob ties to marching with Martin Luther King Jr., there's so much more to the silk-voiced legend than you realize. As soon as he turned 18, Tony Bennett's life was transformed when he was drafted into the U.S. Army to fight in World War II in 1944. According to PBS, the young singer only had six weeks of boot camp before joining the 63rd Infantry Division on the front lines in France and Germany. He also helped in the liberation of the Kaufering concentration camp after the Nazi army had been mostly defeated. The Germans were frightened. We were frightened. Nobody wanted to kill anybody. The experience made him a lifelong pacifist, although he later faced backlash for his views when it came to the Iraq War, per The Guardian. Bennett shared in his memoir, The Good Life, the main thing I got out of my military experience was the realization that I am completely opposed to war. Every war is insane, no matter where it is or what it's about. Fighting is the lowest form of human behavior. Tony Bennett might never have become Tony Bennett without the help of a screen legend who gave him a new stage name. Speaking with Today, Bennett recalled that when he was performing at the Greenwich Village Inn with the entertainer Pearl Bailey, he was spotted by Bob Hope. Hope asked him what his name was, and as Bennett explained, I had a name that I thought would be catchy, and I said, Joe Bari. Bob said, that's a city in Italy. What's your real name? When Bennett admitted that it was Anthony Dominic Benedetto, Hope decided that he would be called Tony Bennett instead. You know, it's been about 16 years since I discovered you singing in a Greenwich Village nightclub. Hope also brought Bennett on tour with him, allowing the Italian-American singer to perform across the country and showing him how to win over an audience. The world of show business has its shady side, and Bennett was haunted by the same rumors of mob connections that surrounded his fellow Italian-American crooner, Frank Sinatra. His biographer, David Evanier, claimed in All the Things You Are, The Life of Tony Bennett, that Bennett's early career was given a boost by the mob figures that owned the nightclubs in New York. Bennett reportedly severed those connections by the 1960s by paying $600,000. Although his family wasn't happy with these rumors being published in Evanier's book, per the Daily News, other sources did reportedly confirm Bennett's links to the mob. According to the Daily News, one of the singer's reliable associates also told Evanier that the notorious hitman Tony Spilatro had a violent confrontation with Bennett in the 70s after finding out that the singer had been linked to his girlfriend. The Vegas gangster allegedly clobbered Bennett in the head with a telephone book, a fairly tame interaction for someone like Spilatro, who reportedly inspired Joe Pesci's character in Casino. As well as becoming a lifelong pacifist, Bennett was also shocked by the racism that he encountered in the army during World War II. Despite being promoted to the rank of corporal, he was demoted after inviting a black friend to dinner with him in a segregated mess hall. The singer wrote in his memoir, The Good Life, it was actually more acceptable to fraternize with the German troops than it was to be friendly with a fellow black American soldier. These experiences led him to become involved in the civil rights movement. Bennett was invited to march alongside Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in Selma by his friend and fellow singer Harry Belafonte in 1965, as the pair told CNN. At first, he was reluctant to join the protests, but Belafonte convinced him by describing the horrors that were happening. Evil and that kind of will to destroy fellow beings was very much in the air. As Bennett told CNN, when I heard that, I said, I'll go with you. You know, I just realized that this is insanity. Over 25,000 protesters filled the streets in the end, despite backlash from the white community. Bennett recalled, We decided we were just going to march right through it, no matter what. Bennett's lifelong appreciation of jazz was so intense that he sometimes couldn't control his own bodily reactions. As he revealed to Today, he was living in New York at the pinnacle of bebop, and his vocal teacher told him to venture out into the city and observe musicians he loved. So he developed his own style by emulating great instrumentalists, including Miles Davis and John Coltrane, who he watched at the clubs on 52nd Street. And one night, Bennett and a friend went to see Charlie Parker perform without knowing who he was. As the jazz aficionado told The Guardian, he was so shaken by Parker's talent that he had to leave a club and vomit after seeing the saxophonist perform. As he described it, I regurgitated. It was so phenomenal, so emphatic. It was more music than I ever heard anyone play at one time. I just couldn't believe how great it was. Bennett went through what he called his darkest period in the 70s when he lost his record contract and racked up a ton of debt. The singer said in his book, All the Things You Are, The Life of Tony Bennett, I owed something like $1.2 million, which was a fortune in those days. At least half of it was in back taxes I couldn't afford to pay. After his mother died in 1977, Bennett's grief pushed him to turn to drugs more and more often. His addiction reached a breaking point in 1979 after a near-fatal cocaine overdose. Sandra Grant, his second wife, found Bennett unconscious in their bathtub and saved his life by immediately taking him to the hospital. 
Then it quit entirely soon after, thanks to the words of a friend. He told Page Six in 2010 that his attitude towards drugs was changed forever by Jack Rollins, the former manager of comedian and heroin addict Lenny Bruce. Bennett revealed, He said something that changed my life. He said, He sinned against his talent. It affected me so much that I just got rid of everything. After going through those financially and personally disastrous years, Tony Bennett ended up turning to his family for support. As his son, Danny Bennett, told the New York Times, his father reached out to him after his overdose. Danny, who had unsuccessfully tried to launch his own music career at the time, explained, I think that was a desperate move. Desperate or not, the decision to let his son handle his finances worked out for Tony, and his IRS debt was settled not long after. The elder Bennett also told the New York Times how paranoid about money he was before his son became his manager. Danny not only got Tony Bennett's financial life back on a golden path, but he also revitalized his father's career. He staged a comeback for Tony, introducing him to younger audiences through MTV and David Letterman. Danny revealed the key to his strategy to Entertainment Weekly in 1990. You just put him in front of enough people, they're gonna get it. It doesn't matter what age. While jazz music is what Tony Bennett is known for, the singer has always been equally loyal to the art world. My whole life I've just been possessed with singing and painting. It's something I have to do is Throughout his career, Bennett has painted under his family name, Benedetto. Among many achievements, his landscapes and portraits have been displayed by the Smithsonian and commissioned by the United Nations. In his book, Tony Bennett in the Studio, A Life of Art and Music, Bennett recalled, I found, even as a kid, I'd draw or paint away, and all of a sudden it was my own little creation. I was shocked by it, in a way. I'd say, look at that. Look at that thing I made. As he revealed to PBS, Bennett was even tempted to give up singing in favor of becoming a full-time painter. However, he got some fateful advice from his music teacher. Bennett explained, He encouraged me to stick with the music as well, so all my life I've been singing and painting. One of Tony Bennett's biggest influences and closest friends was Frank Sinatra, who changed the course of his career. In a 1965 interview with Life magazine, Sinatra called Bennett the best singer in the business, naming the younger man as one of his favorite musicians, and saying, He excites me when I watch him. He moves me. He's the singer who gets across what the composer has in mind, and probably a little more. In return, Bennett founded the Frank Sinatra School of the Arts in 1999. Referencing how Sinatra's remarks in Life magazine led to Bennett's worldwide success, the singer explained to The Guardian, he changed my life. I thought naming the school after him was proper etiquette. He also praised Sinatra's loyalty in Time magazine, describing him as full of love. On top of recounting an incident where the crooner brought hundreds of policemen to protect Judy Garland, Bennett shared a touching anecdote involving his mother. He told Time, One night my mother and I were watching Sinatra on TV doing the main event. He knew my mother was dying, and he turned to the audience and said that Tony Bennett was his favorite guy in the whole world. My mother's face lit up like a Christmas tree. This image will stay with me as long as I live. One of Tony Bennett's biggest fans, Amy Winehouse, was also an icon in her own right. Bennett and Winehouse's duet of Body and Soul was her last recording before her untimely death at age 27. Bennett recalled to Entertainment Weekly, She was very nervous to perform, but I said, You know, it sounds like you're influenced by Dina Washington. And all of the sudden, her whole life changed. Bennett also spoke about their shared love of authentic jazz singing and reflected on the tragedy of her death, saying, Amy had that gift. The fact that she died at 27 years old is just horrible to me. When listening to this record, you could hear that she had the whole facility of an Ella Fitzgerald, of a, of a Billie Holiday. Bennett invited the late star's parents on stage with him when their duet won a Grammy the following year. Winehouse's father said, We shouldn't be here. Our darling daughter should be here. He also shared that she had been thrilled to work with Bennett. Another young star who considers Tony Bennett a hero is Lady Gaga. The pair first worked together for his Duets 2 album in 2011, recording a version of The Lady is a Tramp that was so successful they decided to collaborate on an entire album, 2014's Cheek to Cheek. In an interview with Parade, the veteran jazz singer and the eclectic pop star shared how they bonded over their Italian-American roots and their dedication to their families. Gaga even credited Bennett with saving her life during a particularly low period. Hinting that people in her life had taken advantage of her, she revealed, I was so sad. I couldn't sleep. I felt dead. And then I spent a lot of time with Tony. He wanted nothing but my friendship and my voice. Meanwhile, in the same interview, Bennett praised Gaga for her stage presence and her vocal abilities. Sharing how much he loved working with the pop star, he declared, She's up there with Ella Fitzgerald, who is the greatest singer in the world. Describing Bennett as, quote, an incredible mentor and friend and father figure, Gaga later told AARP, The fact that Tony sees me as a natural-born jazz singer is still something that I haven't gotten over. I love Tony so much. He is my musical companion. Following Cheek to Cheek, the pair teamed up again for another album. But the recording process for their third collaboration has been considerably slower, and there's a heartbreaking reason why. 
Fans across the world were heartbroken when Tony Bennett and his family revealed that he had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in 2021. After speaking with Bennett's wife, Susan, AARP reported that the singer first started exhibiting symptoms in 2015 when he began to forget the names of his backing musicians. His doctor, however, noted, he is doing so many things at 94 that many people without dementia cannot do. His official Twitter posted an equally upbeat message for his fans after the article had been published. Life is a gift, even with Alzheimer's. Thank you to Susan and my family for their support and AARP The Magazine for telling my story. Bennett's doctors recommended that he keep up his rigorous touring schedule before COVID-19 hit. He still rehearsed regularly, accompanied twice a week by his pianist. In her interview with AARP, Susan insisted, singing is everything to him, everything. It has saved his life many times. Tony Bennett tragically died on July 21st at the age of 96 at his home in Manhattan. The singer's Instagram account shared the news with his 400,000 plus followers in a heartbreaking post which read, Tony left us today, but he was still singing the other day at his piano, and his last song was Because of You, his first number one hit. Tony, because of you, we have your songs in our heart forever. Bennett's longtime publicist, Sylvia Weiner, also broke the news in a statement to media outlets. It's unclear whether or not Bennett died of natural causes. Once the news of Bennett's death broke, tributes from other celebrities came pouring in. On his website, Billy Joel wrote, I will always be grateful for his outstanding contribution to the art of contemporary music. He was a joy to work with. His energy and enthusiasm for the material he was performing was infectious. He was also one of the nicest human beings I've ever known. Elton John also shared a photo of himself and Bennett in a heartfelt tribute on Instagram. Sending his condolences to Bennett's family, he wrote, So sad to hear of Tony's passing. Without doubt, the classiest singer, man, and performer you will ever see. He's irreplaceable. I loved and adored him. Bennett may be gone, but he'll never be forgotten.